What did men pride themselves on 50 years ago or 100 years ago? I tell you exactly what they prided themselves on. They prided themselves on bravery, charisma, their ability to get women and all these good things, right? All these good masculine habits. How brave were you in this war? How did you act in this? A, a fight. I can fight. I can lift this much weight. This is what men used to pride themselves on. And what do they pride themselves on now? I can drink this much beer. I can drink this much alcohol because I, before I pass out and vomit myself. I can play these many video games in 24 hours. I have this much time spent or wasted in this video game that doesn't give me anything back. The point, what I'm saying you here is that you're fucked. You're fucked because of modern dating, feminism, gaming, instant gratification, the food that is popular right now, like, like the trash food. That is everywhere and also because of me too because let's be honest when you when you walk over to a woman she has so much more power than you yes maybe you're physically stronger than her but what she can just say she can just ruin your life she can just go to the police and say you raped her and what can you do against it you can do nothing but say no i didn't you can swear i didn't i didn't i didn't but she can just say no no you did you did and who is the police gonna believe you or her. Let's be realistic. The police is going to believe her and you're going to either land in jail or pay a lot of money. Or if everything goes right, then you will be for always forever known as the rapist. Everyone will always crack jokes or oh, remember the time when he raped this girl. And then you will to have ruined your reputa reputation, which is worth a lot as a man. But you know what I think about you? Despite of all these things that go wrong in the modern day about men, despite all the hardship men have to face, despite all the unnecessary bullshit that men have to do to get respect in the modern day, I think that you're a pussy. I do think that. If you think to yourself right now, no, I'm not, I'm not. I, if, I, if I just was born 50 years ago, I would be such a valuable man. Shut up. Please be quiet. If you were born 50 years ago, or 50 years earlier for that matter, you would be the first one to drop to the floor and cry. You would crumble below the things they did back then and you will wish, please take me back to 2024. And if you think, no, I, I can't be a man of value because of the time I live in. I don't think so. I don't think it's because of the time you live in. And if you disagree with me, if you say, oh, I, I would be the strong man, uh, do 100 push-ups right now. Do 100 push-ups right now. And you know what? I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to do it with you. I'm not going to fucking sit here and say, oh, oh do 100 push-ups. We're going to do it together. And I'm going to do it with you. So we're going to do two sets of 50. And you're going to do it with me. So if you can't do this, I won't say, oh, I don't blame you if you can't do this. I do blame you. Because listen, men like you who say, I'm this hard of a man, but you can't even do a hundred push-ups. I personally don't, I personally don't respect you. And maybe you think I should, but I don't. If you can't figure out the discipline to do this, while well, another man tells you, that you can't, I think you're submissive. And never ever say again that you would be a man of value 50 years ago or 100 years ago. <sighs> Let's do the next 50, but probably 25. I haven't done many push ups in the past time. <sighs> <laughs> 
Okay, that was one set of 25. And we're next gonna do one set of 25 again. I don't wanna be too motivational in this video. I wanna get right to the point. This is why I not take, don't take many pauses. And if you see it as an excuse that you have sore muscles or stiff muscles or an injury or whatever, I have these things too. I have a shoulder injury from football, a small one, not nothing too risky. And I have a sore pec muscles and front delts right now. So stop looking for excuses because the excuse of I'm sore or I'm injured is as big of an excuse as I'm born in the wrong time. It's not an excuse. Nothing is an excuse for not being a valuable man. So let's do 25 right now. Let's go. Okay, so I just did this with sore pack muscles and a little bit of a shoulder injury. If you didn't do it for those reasons, for any reason that is like a pussy reason as I like to call them, and you know what I mean. Never again say that you were born in the wrong time and that's why you have lost as a man. Because let me be honest with you, Looking at an excuse and thinking, oh, I'm gonna take this excuse, feels bad, and I know this. Excusing your way around rules and good things that you could do gives you an excuse for a life. When I say I want to describe a bad body, I always say you have an excuse for a body. Because all the excuses you have, oh, science tells me this. This YouTuber told me that. All these excuses you have, they make up your body then. And your body just looks like your excuse. And let me ask you a question. Wouldn't it feel better to not having to use excuses? Wouldn't it feel better to just be able to say, oh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Instead of saying, I didn't do it because blah, 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 blah. Shut up, please. Don't talk to me like that. Don't say, oh, but this, but that, but that, blah, 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 blah. All those fat ones, and I, and I got bullied for that. And I worked through it. I didn't think like, oh, but but they're the wrong people. The bully has usually has the problem. Maybe something is wrong with him at home. Mm. I could have gone through these excuses, but I didn't. I just thought, okay, what will we'll solve my problems? Sports. And it did solve my problem. And now I'm here two years later and teaching my younger self how to get out of the same thing that I used to be in. So listen to me. Let's embrace that I want to become better mindset. I want to be the better man. And this is what this video is about. And to achieve this, making progress, getting better, I'm gonna put you on a free 14 day plan. You don't need to sign up for it. You just need to watch the video in order until the end. And if the plan works for you, you keep going. If not, you don't. But first, how will the plan even work? The plan will be a so-called dopamine detox. You see, <clears throat> you have to imagine something for this, and I want you to really focus on this so it actually sticks in your mind, because I promise this is worth more than probably everything you ever learn in school. If I was allowed to go back 10 years in time and tell my past self from there one thing, I wouldn't tell him about Bitcoin or a business idea or whatever. This is what I would tell to him. This is exactly the things I would teach to my 10 year younger self. So listen attentively. I'm about to share some knowledge with you. So you see, you have a so-called dopamine baseline. Your dopamine baseline is the ratio of how much dopamine usually is in your head. So let's imagine your dopamine baseline is right here. And now let's imagine the gym or anything that takes discipline. Just imagine something that takes discipline for you. Maybe it's the gym, maybe it's school, whatever. Just choose one. And that is slightly above it. So right here. 
And now there is something called Instagram. And Instagram is not exactly, but this high drugs or whatever addictive behavior you might have. And it's right here. And if you do enough of this and you get your happiness or your dopamine score up here frequently enough, then your baseline will be here. And then the gym will be here. And everything that is below this line is not fun. It takes discipline. And therefore, if you do more Instagram, if your brain gets used to this much dopamine instead of this much, then this here becomes unfun because now your baseline, your normal state is up here and this is below it. Makes sense, right? Now, this plan will work on reducing your dopamine level down again to right here. So the discipline thing is fun again. And how this will also work is Instagram doesn't make the gym more fun. So the gym stays where it is, right? The you don't get jacked because you do Instagram. But if you get your dopamine baseline down here again, and the gym becomes more fun, then you will go to the gym more. Then you will become more jacked and then the gym, trust me, if you're more jacked, the gym is more fun. So the gym isn't this here anymore, it's this. And then your life in general is more fun because life being jacked is more fun than life being a little skinny boy, trust me, or the fat man for that matter. And then your dopamine baseline is here. And at some point you will work your way up the disciplined habit is more fun because you can become jacked and then your regular life also becomes more fun because life with more progress on this discipline thing is more fun and at some point you will you will walk up this ladder and at some point your baseline level will be so high that it's actually higher than instagram and then instagram becomes boring porn becomes boring drugs become boring and you won't have a problem with this now this will take time. Don't expect this process of going up here to be taking two weeks. I am probably right here, right now, after two years of making self-improvement progress, I'm here. So I went from here to here within two years. So Instagram is still kind of exciting for me if I decide to go on it. Get your dopamine basic level down takes maybe two weeks and then the gym is fun again and then you can start making actual progress and this is why I designed this program exactly and specifically for you so that you can lower your baseline dopamine and start making progress that feels fun and not too disciplined because if you need discipline for something at some point you're going to feel relieved by stopping it and you're not going to do it for your whole life so this is essentially a guide on how to make discipline fun again now I made uh, three to-dos for this program and three not to-dos. Let's keep in mind that the bad things we do, the addictions we have, drugs, alcohol, Instagram, YouTube, porn, gaming, whatever you name it, you know what I'm talking about, is not the cause of our mental health or, or, or of our bad mental health at first. It's the symptom. So in the way in which you get a cold and then you have a headache, the headache is the symptom and the cold is the cause. So mental health should be or is the cause of your addictions. So you're not doing, so, you're, so you don't have bad mental health because you are addicted to these things. You have addictions to these things because you have bad mental health. And this is what this plan works on. With the good habits, we work on the mental health and we try to solve the cause. And with the not to do's, we try to eliminate the effects or the symptoms because at some point, you know it. At some point, you, be, you start having the symptoms as the cause. So you sneeze in your elbow and then there's, and there's like the, the bacteria is here and then you fucking touch this and then you eat the bacteria, right? At some point it's a devil cycle. So we need to grab both things. You have, you can have tried both things individually and individually. So doing only one part of these things, only doing the to do's or the not to do's will take more discipline than doing both. So let's start with the first to do, 
which is meditation. Meditation is the art of paying attention to nothing and being able to pay attention to nothing for a long amount of time. You probably know post not clarity. Post not clarity is basically an argument that your new part of your brain and your old part of your brain have. So your new part of your brain thinks that porn is not real. It knows everything that you know. It is your conscious thoughts. Your old brain, however, is your unconscious. So when you watch porn, your old brain thinks this is real. If you play a video game like Battlefield, your old brain thinks you are in war right now. And this is what makes you feel bad after those bad habits. This is one part of you feeling bad. We'll cover the other part later. Now, post not clarity or post action clarity, as I like to call it, because you also kind of have this after video games. You also kind of think I shouldn't have done this after you played three hours of video games. But I refer to it as post not clarity just because you probably know the, the words better. Now, if you watch porn, your old brain thinks this is real and that he's having sex right now. Your new brain, however, knows this is only porn. And so your old brain and your new brain have an argument. And this argument is you only hear your new brain. And your new brain says he's only watching porn. He is a loser. Don't give him testosterone. Don't give him these things. He's not worth it. And your old brain you don't hear because it's subconscious. So imagine two people arguing in a room about you and one side is for you, the other side is against you and you only hear the part that is against you. That is post not clarity. And what we do with meditation is we basically form attention for nothing. So we form attention on how our thoughts work. So we gain more control over our thoughts and more control over our subconscious thoughts. And therefore, we can also kind of blunt the effects of these things. So meditation will make you in on one part more disciplined because it's hard to do. And on the other part, it will make you less vulnerable, wo, vo, <laughs> vulnerable to bad thoughts or intrusive thoughts after you did something bad. So you might as well meditate. How to meditate? You sit down and you focus on your breath. If you get distracted by thoughts or sounds or whatever, don't judge the thoughts. Simply sit down and think, how do I feel about this thought? If you think, I wanna jerk off, think, wait, this thought isn't me. I don't want to jerk off. I'm more afraid of jerking off, right? I, I think like, oh, jerking off. And then you automatically think, oh, I want to jerk off. And then you jerk off. But what your brain actually wants to tell you is you are afraid of jerking off. But your brain only thinks jerking off. And if you just find this, find this activation of your brain and you just can figure out, okay, I don't want to jerk off. I'm actually afraid of losing my streak again. And this is what meditation will do for you. You sit down, you take deep breaths, deep controlled breaths, and you simply wait for thoughts to occur, to occur. When a thought occurs, which you should not do by any means, right? You should, you should try to be focused. You should try your best to not have thoughts by focusing on the breath and every detail of the breath that you can right now think about. And then you just wait until thought occurs and then you think about that thought, okay, what do I think about this? Do I want to do this or do I not want to do this? Do I like the idea of doing this or am I afraid of the idea of doing this? Let's talk about the next thing, which is gratitude journaling. Now, a good life, in my opinion, is not a happy life, but a grateful life. Happiness is the feeling you have right now and gratitude is the feeling that lasts forever. Being watching porn makes me happy. Jerking off makes me happy. Playing video games makes me happy. Do I want to do it? No. <laughs> Reading in the Bible makes me grateful. Going to the gym makes me grateful. Making progress makes me grateful. Filming videos makes me grateful. Having a YouTube channel that has 2,227 subscribers makes me grateful. 
So what do you think I should focus on? The things I'm happy with doing or the things I'm grateful for having? Of course, the things I'm grateful for having. So what I do, I write down every single day one full page. I'm just gonna show you my gratitude journal. It looks like this, it's a really, really nice book. And I just write down every single day. I am grateful that I that I got compliments by Cold, a friend of mine. It's his nickname, Cold. Um, I got a compliment for my videos. It says this in my journal. I am grateful that Cold gave me a con gave me a compliment for my videos today. And how beautiful is that I can just flip open this book and see a hundred thousand things that I am grateful for. And I want you to think about this, not as something I'm grateful for having done this, but I'm grateful for having this object. Because if you write, I'm grateful for doing this, then you basically just write what you have done in the day right? You can just write then a regular journal, but a gratitude journal, something about the objects that you have. So in terms of that compliment, I could say I'm grateful for having a camera and I'm grateful for the ability to film videos with this. I'm grateful for having a PC. I'm grateful for having a YouTube channel and I'm grateful for having friends. These are way more points and it, and it goes into way much more detail than just saying I'm grateful for the compliment. But what you write now about is you write down every single evening or morning. And if you want to go extreme evening and morning, like I used, like I want to do it, you write down 10 things you're grateful for having, not for having done, but for objects that you have. And you think really hard, what can I be grateful for? Can I be grateful for my window? Can I be grateful for the college block that I use for my video scripts? Can I be grateful for the pencil that writes so good? I literally love writing with this, with this pencil. I'm grateful for it. What can I be grateful for that is in my room right now? For the third to do, gym and training. It should be obvious to everyone that training and gym almost only have positive effects if you don't take it too far and take steroids or something stupid. Training and gym is misunderstood by many men. They think, I need a training pro program or something. I'm gonna show you a couple pictures of me and you be the judge, but I look great. I am very confident in my body and I am grateful that I get to have a, such a good body like this. I've worked hard and I don't think that many men understand how hard I've worked for this body and I'm genuinely very grateful for having this. I love my body and I love my life because I love my body and I want you to have the same thing. So I'm gonna share with you my training program. And to, to cut it short, I could explain it to you, but it is in the description. That's exactly the program I train after to feel good, to feel confident in my body, to love training every single day. It's completely free. It's just in the description of this video. No links, no nothing, just text in the description of this video. So just get it right there. Take a screenshot of it and post it on your refrigerator in your home gym or use it as your iPhone wallpaper. It's mostly barbell training because I don't like to train with machines. If you're a beginner, you should probably train at home. If you start training right now, just follow the tips that I give you in this video somewhere here. It's a video in the info card that I have uh, linked about how I trained at home and how I made gains from home. Now to the not to do's. The not to do's treat the symptoms because we need to take the symptoms away because like I said in the beginning, the symptoms at some point will become the cause. At some point, Instagram will be responsible for your bad mental health. But first, you start off with bad mental health because society ruins it by not treating men in the way they're supposed to be treated or school or work or whatever. And then you get bad mental health. And then as a symptom of bad mental health, you then get addicted to all these quick dopamine things. Because if you are uncomfortable the whole day, and if you're uncomfortable unwillingly, so if you're basically being enslaved by what you do, then you crave comfort. So the first things, the to do's will make you like what you do more, regardless of what you do. So let's start with the first not to do, which is social media. Don't cope. 
Donald think. Oh, but, 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 but it's, but it's good for me. Mm, I, I think I, I'm, I'm learning so much because of it. Mm. Think about what is on your Instagram page. Let's look at it right now. Let's look at your Instagram page right now. Women, 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 gym, women, 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 Catholic belief, women, 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 a couple of edits of money or status or fame or whatever, women, 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 women. And you're putting yourself at a greater risk of masturbating, of jerking off, of indulging in instant gratification that is bad for you. And I want you to admit this and I want you to think, is this little bit of entertainment worth the mental health problems that I have? Are the two hours that I spend on Instagram that are a little bit more fun than my usual life worth the rest 22 hours of my day being completely shit because of it? No, it's not. Let me tell you something. If you delete Instagram right now, you will be grateful for this within a week or two. The first week will be hard, the second will be fun, the third will be great, trust me. So delete it right now, don't cope, don't say any stupid fucking shit, I've heard all the excuses that there are, all of them, delete it right now, even if you find good edits on your Instagram, they are still bad for you because the cuts are way too fast, this is why this video is cut kind of slowly so you don't fucking get hypnotized or something by this video because I want you to learn something and not just watch the thing like a dead zombie. Because if, so if you haven't done it now, get out your paper and a pen and write down what you've learned so you can actually apply it. Now let's get to the second and the third, um, not to do is because it's pretty much the same. Junk food and jerking off. Now before you scream, what? I can't quit this, I can't quit this. Listen, I have struggled with no fab for two years and I think now I've come off of it very good. Last time I jerked off was a couple months ago. You should have the mindset not of I'm trying to quit, but I'm not doing it. Let's imagine a guy in a bar and he is drinking alcohol and you offer him a drink. And he says to you, no, sorry, I'm trying to quit. We all know for a fact that this man is going to fail and that he's going to relapse. But what if he says, I don't drink? Then we kind of see, okay, yeah, he, he doesn't drink. Okay, fine, yeah. He'll probably have success. Because I'm trying to quit drinking makes a couple people still think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him drinks anyway. I'm going to tempt him as long as it takes for him to 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 give in and of course you shouldn't make your brother stumble but most people do this and if you tell someone i'm trying to get off of this i'm trying to quit you are basically ringing the bell the eating bell for them to make you crave what they have or what they offer you and the same thing with junk food junk food and jerking off is in my opinion the same habit of course you don't do the same actions and i think that jerking off is way way worse than junk food but at their core, you can avoid it by doing the same things. And this is by by saying simply when someone offers you or when someone tempts you, no, I don't do this. So that's the to do's and the not to do's. If you want a picture of it, I will put pictures right now on screen so you can screenshot it and then just basically keep this list and post it in your room, post it where you can see it, post it at your door. Always works well because you usually look at your door when you pull it open and then you just see, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I don't, shouldn't do. And you can also make a notion habit tracker for yourself on which you can tick off every single to do and every single not to do every single day. I have one question for you if you still think that you can't quit or you don't want to quit. Do you want to be jerking off at 25? Probably not. That's if you're 17. That's almost 10 years from now. Do you want to be jerking off in 10 years? No. Do you want to be jerking off at 20? It's still a long time then, and no, I don't see like many men I respect jerking off with 20. So do I want it? No. Do I want to be jerking off with 18? No, then I'm an adult, you know, then I count as like an, a full adult. Uh, so no, probably not. I don't want to be jerking off then. But it's only one year to then. <laughs> so you see where I'm going right now. 
You don't want to be jerking off in five years. You don't want to be jerking off in three years. But do you want to be jerking off tomorrow? Yes or no? This is the decision you need to you need to make right now for yourself. Write your answer down and remind yourself of this answer every single day. All this fancy talking and all these ways to explain things and all the fucking oh do this because of that and blah blah blah, blah and all the video making sense and everything and all the scripting and thumbnail making and getting you to click and to interact and to watch the video and to learn something from it doesn't have any use if you don't act on it. So it's very important that you give yourself the chance of improving within the next 14 days. In the next 14 days, you're going to do all the to do's and none of the not to do's. I don't care if you miss one day. If you miss one day, you start over again. And I promise you, when you have finished this, when you really have gone 14 days with all the to do's, meditation, gym, and the gratitude journaling, and no social media junk food or jerking off, you will feel so much better. I promise you this by my name. And I promise you at some point, you will think like, oh man, I'm, I'm going to do it. So you might as well do it now. The time is going to pass anyway. The next 14 days cannot be spent more productively. I promise this by my name. And if you went, if you go through this 14 day pro process and you think, oh, it doesn't change anything about my life, write in the comments and I will make 500 push ups for you on camera and upload it. I've given you the knowledge necessary to win. In this video, I've given you all the knowledge that I would give to my five year younger self. And as I said in the beginning, I would rather tell my younger self about this than about Bitcoin or business or whatever, some business model that would have made me millions of dollars. I wouldn't have told my younger self, but this I would have told him. So I have equipped you with all the knowledge that you need to know to win. It's now your choice to either act on this knowledge or to not act on it. But now you have it. This is the guide that I would give my younger self. Master your mind. But now, yeah, hey man, what should they do? Subscribe.